So the 2023 Isle of Man TT is nearly upon us. And after a few years off, uh, as the world was a little bit poorly, it came back with a vengeance last year. Am I allowed to say that? Maybe not. But it came back with a vengeance last year. Four of the six solar class wins went to this fella, who still owns the outright lap record. 2018? 2018. 2018. Yeah. Some record. Uh, and he's going at it again this year. This video, we're going to look at what's going to happen in the 2023 TT. Peter Hickman, Bike Social Ambassador, uh, FHO Racing BMW Extraordinaire. So, you are, well, the defending champ. Nine yeah. wins now as well, isn't it? That was a good introduction, I like that, thanks. <laughs> yeah, uh, nine wins now, yeah. Good job. Ho and, uh, hopefully a few more after this year. Yeah, well you're doing six, eight. Eight, of course, because they've increased all the races. So you're all pretty much races, doing everything yeah. except sidecars. Basically, yeah, everything except sidecars. Well, how do you, how do you, you're renowned for being a bit laid back and you've said it a million <laughs> times already, but how do you kind of prepare for the TT? Close to the TT now. <laughs> um, when, when do you start thinking about it? Uh, after this weekend's done, is my honest answer. I get asked it quite a lot. How do you prepare or are you really looking forward to TT? And I get asked it from January onwards, really. But to be honest, I, don't, I think about whatever's next. And right now, <laughs> we're on a BSB weekend. And I'm thinking about BSB, and until tomorrow's done, yeah. I will then start thinking about TT. And if I, if I don't do it that way, there's too much information, there's too much to think about. It's a bit like with the Northwest last week, you know, people saying, oh, are you looking forward to the Northwest? Or they were talking about Northwest at Alton Park. I'm like, no, I'm doing Alton Park. I get that done, and then I think about Northwest. And that's all I think about. And once that's done, I think about Donington. And then once that's done, I think about TT. And if, if I don't do that, and I think too far ahead, which I'm not really that sort of person usually anyway. In fact, most races, races aren't. We're not a breed of people that think too far into the future. Uh, you just, there's too much information in your head. So whatever is next is what I focus on. So right now it's tomorrow, I'm trying to make the best I can do here. We're having a bad weekend, but we're trying to make the best of what we can do. And then, then I'll think about TT. But as far as preparation is concerned, I think it's a really difficult event to prepare for properly, whatever you classes properly or preparing for me I need to be sharp I need to be fast I need to be as fit as possible I feel like I'm all of them things already from what I do here in the Northwest so from my side I've done as much as I can do really now it's going to be down to the FHO racing team uh, with the BMWs and then with my own PHR team with the Triumph and the and the little Super Twin. Do you ride around here a little bit during the, before TT do you ride around a bit nervous like, oh, I don't want to crash or so again, like, comes into me or... So again, that's what people always are, oh, you, you know, you're not quite as fast before TT and uh, to be honest, I say what a load of bollocks, you know, if, if I was worried about getting injured, I just wouldn't turn up, right, because if, if you're thinking like that, you're not 100% mm. and you know, I'm employed by FHO to race here as much as I am TT and I give 110% no matter what I'm doing and if I felt like I was in a position that was not a position that was dangerous, but if I was thinking like that, then there's no point of even being here. So for me, you do whatever's, so for me, I just focus on whatever is right now and then deal with whatever happens afterwards. It's funny, as a businessman, because you've got so many feathers in your cap, you know, you, 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 you kind of, and you do, because we've seen it in action, you plan so far and ahead with what you're doing with your business, and yet as a racer, it's, it's all about the here and now, yeah. which is, which is you know, a transition for you. You're almost unique in, in, in terms of other riders in the paddock with what you do extracurricular. That's not even a word, but <laughs> outside, away from the paddock. I, you know, it's admirable. <clears throat> Thanks. Um, moving on, that wasn't even a question, it was a statement, but it, you talked about the, the Northwest, and, and we, 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 it's obvious what happened there, but from your perspective, in terms of preparation for the TT, did you need to be out on that Superstock bike, or did you need to be on that super bike, or, or with yeah. what you achieved on Super Twin and Super Sport? Uh, yes and no. It's always good to ride the bikes on a road, doing 200 mile an hour, that's on a bumpy road as well. It's different to riding the bikes here. It, there's just something about it that's different. And the Northwest is a good warm up for the TT. It gets you used to doing 200 mile an hour on a road, on a bumpy road, and just really tells you whether the bike is stable or not stable, or you can learn some bits. And even from the very limited time that I did, I learned something on the super bike and I learned something on the stocker. Mm. So, regardless of the fact we didn't race in the end, um, we still learned something. And, uh, and how valuable that would be, and would I have just sorted it on night one at the TT? Probably. But 
you're still one step ahead of where you would have been. Um, but yeah, the yeah, Northwest was the Northwest. <laughs> say no more. I'm sure you've got plenty of carbon wheels, should say. No, because we're allowed to use them everywhere <coughs> else. In fact, all the people still use them at this year's Northwest on the Thursday and the Saturday, but just let's us. Get, let's not get just us that got told we're not allowed to. <laughs> we saw you last year on the Gas Monkey Garage um, liveried bike. Mm. Are we going to are we going to see that again this year? Um, no, you're not actually. No, so um, no, no Gas Monkey BMW. Uh, it's FHO. However, there is a sponsor, a title sponsor, um, which will be announced shortly. I would have thought because DT is only a week and a bit away. So uh, I would have thought at some point next week is going to be an announcement. Um, Probably by the time you've watched this. I was going to say, yeah, when is this coming out? <laughs> when I get time when, to when you When you get time to <laughs> press, press yeah. upload. Yeah. Well, anyway, you might already know and you might not, but <laughs> there's a story about to break with, with what the title sponsor is. It's going gonna, it's gonna to look really cool and, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. The bike looks mega anyway. And that's Superbike Superstar. Superbike Superstar that's with FHO, course, yeah, yeah with, the, with the new sponsor. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, PHR side is the Trooper... Triumph mm -hmm. 765, and then the little R7 in the Super Twin. Lovely job. 2023 brings along a lot of schedule changes with the, the layout and the format of the TT. I mean, it's already been condensed, and there's more races. And of course, there's, there's now a, the first race is on a different day, and the last race is on a different day. Mm -hmm. In terms of packing it all in, do you worry about stuff like that? Do you let other people worry about that? Do you plan differently, or is it just you just I go with the kind flow. Of the answer. You already know the answer. Yeah, don't I do, you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, just go with the flow. I mean, TT is like that anyway. It doesn't matter how you plan it. At the end of the day, the weather really mm. dictates what actually happens. You know, we've ended up having practices on the, what was meant to be the first race day, and then we've raced on a Sunday before now. You know, I've done that a couple of times in recent years. So, really, the scheduling doesn't make that much difference to me. I think more races is a good thing not a bad thing I, at the end, and I'm a racer I like to race so you give me more races I'm a happier person uh, I don't think the, the one criticism that I have of the, of the whole scheduling is the cut laps on the Super Twin and the Super Stop that's the one thing and I said it to the organisers before they announced it before they even fully decided it because they, they conferred with not just myself but all the teams the mm. riders a lot before uh, before these changes were actually implemented and my my big thing all the time was don't cut the laps because I a TT is an endurance race and by cutting the laps you're making it less of an endurance race and more of a sprint race mm. and I personally disagree with it but it is what it is the super twin is now three laps the super stock races are now three laps but just get on with it yeah quite <laughs> <coughs> who's um, who's your main competition in yeah. let's go from the let's go from what well, superbike and senior superbike and senior stock. I mean um, I mean Dean's the obvious answer because he's been the, the closest so far but it looks like MD's up to speed you know he's fast at the northwest yeah. straight away even on day one which is really good to see so who knows what side of the bed he's going to turn up out of so um, I think they're, them two are like a really obvious one Connor's the next obvious he's been on the podium now in the big bike races for the last few years has been the next one really in line in front of Michael to be honest um, after that, especially those do, guys. Do you know what? I'll tell, tell you the one person who's going to surprise a few people, I personally think, is my teammate. <laughs> I, I really do, I genuinely do. Um, I, and he's been away from it a little bit, but I, I don't think that's going to bother him as much as what people think, or even he maybe even thinks. I don't know. I've not really spoken to him about it that much, yeah. but he's a class rider and he's on a proper bike and in a proper team, and I think. It can surprise a few people. It's an obvious. The obvious next question is, yeah, do you guys talk about stuff like that? Yeah, I mean, we do do, and, we, and we've been. I suppose it goes back to that. I talk about whatever is right now, and that's why I've not really spoken about TT because I've spoken about BSB and Northwest, and now it's BSB again this weekend. So we talk a lot, and we work actually really well together. It's it's been really nice as a, to have a teammate that's super fast, super honest, and very professional. Right? Yeah, super professional. Yeah. Sets the bike up. I went similar to me we, we you know obviously I'm quite a bit bigger in stature than him so there's always going to be some differences and we ride slightly different but we're actually quite similar that's uh, probably the first team I've had in a long time now that's been similar to me so 
from, from my perspective, although he keeps beating me, which I'm not that keen on. <laughs> um, although that also proves that the development that I've helped do over the last four years has actually been the right sort of development because he's kind of jumped on it and gone fast. So that kind of makes me feel good in, in, in a different way. I just need to figure out how to go faster than him now. <laughs> In terms of, go on. Do you, think, will, do you think he'll be leaning on you a little bit more during the two weeks? At the TT? Yeah. I don't know. I think Josh is very much a person that tends to do his own do thing his own anyway. Own yeah. And, and that's not to say that even here we all debrief together and we all share all the information anyway. And we will do it at the TT 100%. Mm. But how much he actually takes on board, I, I, it's up to him. I, he, he always strikes me as a person that will do what he thinks is right, which is... Fair enough, and it's a good way to be anyway. I was a bit like that when I started. I took some advice, but from very select people, and didn't take too much of it, because everyone's got a different opinion, and we all see things differently. Like one person say, oh, you need to do this, and you need to do that, next person will say the same thing, but in a different way, but it might, it might come across as something completely different. So you've got to be a little bit careful with what advice and who you take it from, and how you interpret that advice as well especially at the TT, you know, when someone says, oh, I do this kind of flat out, do they actually do it flat out or do they roll first and then go flat out? You know, there's, there's <laughs> so you're flat out through the corner, but you've actually scrubbed yeah. 10 mile an hour off before you got there. So there's, you've got to be careful. Uh, working through the classes, so super sport, obviously on the Triumph, but uh, who, who, who do you look out for there? Uh, the, again, the obvious one there is Michael. He's won the super sport races properly the last mm. few years. Yeah. I managed to sneak one on him in, in 2019, <laughs> which was nice. Um, and actually, we've been super fast at the Northwest on the bike as well, which has been really good. So um, Michael's an, a really obvious one on his bike. Um, Dean now has obviously switched teams for the Super Sport only, and he's on a proper bike. So and was up right at the front of the Northwest. So I think that bodes well for him. Um, after that, obviously, unfortunately, we're not not going to have Lee there, which Lee should have been there, absolutely, he's, he's a front runner in super sports, so after that, I don't know, Davey, obviously, yeah. yeah, super strong, Davey's been strong, and actually for the big bike, you never know where Davey's going to end up either, you know, he's there or thereabouts at the Northwest, so let's see if he can translate it into TT. Am I right in thinking you're a team boss as well in the super sport race? Technically, yeah, so yeah, you've got yeah, Pierre, haven't you? Pierre Bian, well? yeah, yeah, the French rider is riding uh, a sister bike to mine, so basically an identical bike. Um, first time I've had a teammate on the roads, which has been interesting. So Northwest was the first time I've had a teammate that I ran. Um, he finished ninth in the first race, best super sport result he's ever had at Northwest for him. So really, really happy inside the top 10. Unfortunately, he's got a little injury, which ruled him out of the Saturday. He made a good start. He was up to about seventh and then he couldn't change gear properly. So he just ah. called it a day. Wanted to rest, ready for the TT, but yeah, we've got uh, Pierre Bian as well, so the French riders having a, having a real good time of it. In fact, we did a couple of wild cards in BSB at the start of the year as well, so it's been, uh, yeah, it's been interesting. Getting quite fit. And Super Twin? Yeah, the little Super Twin was brand fire new at the, uh, at the Northwest. And Is it went, the R7? Yeah, it went really well, you know. Like, you hadn't done a lot of testing, had you, beforehand? Zero. <laughs> <laughs> so we got on the boat Saturday night, which was May the 6th, was it? Yeah, May the 6th. We got the bike running about 9 a.m. Saturday morning for the first time. Then it had to go on the dyno and get mapped to however we could map it as safe and as fast as possible. Got put in the van and sent to the boat. So it was very much a rushed last minute job that has a lot of potential. And even now going to TT, it will, well, it should have a few more ponies because we've learned something from, and we were super safe because we just didn't know where to be yeah. with it because it was all brand new. And we finished fifth on it in the first race. You know, I mean, that's yeah. super good, really. I mean, I was super happy with, with that. And the Northwest is odd with the rules because they allow board out 650s, which absolutely just clear off at the front anyway. So finishing fifth, there was actually only one TT spec, let's say, bike in front of me. So actually, it was a second place. Second in class. Is, is the way to look, the way I looked at it anyway. And even that bike was a pattern. But I actually, bought, I actually beat quite a few of the patterns. So think that bodes really really well for the TT and we might not have the top speed and a lot of that will be a bit in me because I'm a bigger rider again but the handling was so so good so I, I'm quite looking forward to getting the bike to the TT and see what it can do. Do you think it could be the package to be on the Yeah yeah do if the rules stay as they are right now I think I think actually yeah I think it's going to surprise a few people even though it's got very little development over here in Europe anyway in the US 
they kind of went the Yamaha route, not the Aprilia route, and everywhere in Europe went Aprilia, not Yamaha, mm. but a few of them are now are starting to, to turn up. How many ponies did you find? Uh, we're, so they started... About 70, aren't they? Yeah, so brand new, it was 70 or 71 on our dyno, and she's over 100, even on that first engine that we did. It was, she was just over 100 on the Saturday before we took it. So not too bad. Not too bad at all. And we know we can squeeze some more out yet. So sure. let's see. What a bags you go on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Good. So that's your other rivals. Why, I tell you what, a question I, I, I've not heard the answer to before. I bet you've been asked this. Why, why number 10? Why do you start at 10? Uh, Especially the TT when you've got guys in front of you. Yeah, really boring answer, but I don't like being number one. So technically I should be number one because it your seeded number goes on your previous years or last two years actually lap speed that's how it's meant to work but all organizers always like to try and mix it up a little bit makes it better for everyone else watching means that they can bring some newer riders that are pretty fast they can put them a bit further up the order then they get more experienced guys passing them so they can learn off them so like for example in my third year i was number five you know, I'd, I'd done 131.6 so I, in, yeah. in my second year, so I was already top 10, fastest ever, but they put me number five, which was really high, higher than what really technically I should be, but what it meant was, in every race, I had fast riders, experienced riders passing me, and then I could just, even if it was one or two corners, I'd go, ah, oh, there, there, ah, oh, I'd just do that, ah, oh, they did this. You know, you've got that for two weeks, it's, it's a good way of doing it, and the organizers do a really good job at that. So it really helped you? Yeah, it did, yeah, and then the next year, I'd, got put to number 10 so, <laughs> so you got put to them yeah so I didn't ask for it no but they also try and off the back of that split who they think would be the favorites for that year they try and split us up as much as possible so that none of us are towing off each other or got a target too right. much um, so that's why you found kind of Dean at number two Michael's been number six which is his kind of favorite number that he's been for quite a long time so then off the back of that I, you don't really want to put me three four five mm. or seven eight so that's it. why they put me to ten and number ten's got a, number ten's got a one in it so halfway there aren't we <laughs> and uh, it just seems to be a good number but it's boded it's been it's boded well for me so far you know the first time i ran it i had five podiums from five races and led my first tt so if it's not broke don't fix it stick with it then <laughs> Now, last year we saw uh, a big docu-series being filmed. No room for error. I need to make an error there. I was just saying, no room for movement. I'd say I have seen it. Have yeah. you? Seen all four it's in all four. So have I've you? seen one and two, and I'm going to watch three tonight. Four episodes. It is very, very, very good. I can't wait. I mean, the trailer alone just gave me goosebumps. Yeah. Well, it's really good. Yeah. Really good. So that gets released Monday night, yeah. two days <coughs> from now. So it'll be but out now. Yeah, you guys can You'll watch it. it. Watch it. <laughs> um, but my point was, though, you had a, a documentary crew following you, and as did several other riders. Yeah. And, you know, everyone knows you get pulled from. You, you <laughs> know anything pulled from pillar to post. Literally. Mm. From, from the moment you land on the island to the moment you leave. And do you just take it on your stride? I mean, you, yeah. again, it's a fairly obvious question, or a fairly obvious answer I'm expecting, just from <laughs> what you said already. But, you know, it, it must be, it, you must get to a point where you think, just leave me alone <laughs> sometimes yeah even myself who's smiley and happy and always kind of says yes <laughs> um yeah it can do and actually there wasn't just one crew there was two crews so there was the docu series and there was the film and yeah. there were actually two different teams of yeah. cameras and people asking questions so we had two crews for the whole two weeks asking questions and doing stuff but that's also why you'll probably see more in the docu series i feature quite a lot in the film and I feature quite a lot less in the docu series, and other riders are the opposite way around. Sure. So that's why that was done that way, because physically there's just not enough time. Not only are we riding four bikes, and obviously for myself, I've got two teams to look after mm. the team on the big bikes and my own team with the small bikes. Then you've got documentary crews, TT film crews, then there's TT sponsors. journalists, sponsors. There's, yeah, there's a lot going on. There's, there's more that goes on than than people ever realise, I yeah. think. But yeah. um, You've got to keep everyone happy, haven't you? Yeah, I'm going to try and almost document it a little bit myself and kind of get a camera. And But then I'm kind of thinking, well, actually, I'm fed up having cameras shoved in my face 24-7 as it is. It's so, But yeah, I kind of thought about doing my own just to like show people. Like Even on a BSB weekend, people don't get it. You know, I'm, my girl, you wear a GoPro. Yeah, and just kind of show what I actually do in a day. Like, 
think Cadwell 2021. Um, Jill came and did like a full weekend with me for the first time that she'd, she'd done a full weekend and she, she wasn't working herself, which normally she is working on a weekend doing something, but that weekend she came and just did the whole weekend with me. Wherever I went, she went. And about halfway through day two, she went, I don't know how you do this. And I was like, what do you mean? She was like, I, I, don't, get, I, don't, know, I don't get how you're still functioning. Because it was literally just one thing, next thing, that, 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 and riding the bike in between. And you don't get any respite until no. the earplugs go in and yeah, the helmet goes on. Yeah, basically. Yeah, getting on the bike's the quietest part, <laughs> the quietest part of the but weekend. It's usually you've got about five <laughs> seconds until you're shuffling yeah. to the start line. <laughs> yeah, so she was, she was like, I can't, I can't actually believe what you do. Like, she didn't even know. She's been around racing a long time, but, but from a rider's perspective, she'd not seen it like mm. that. And she was, yeah, proper taken back by it. Fantastic. Do you feel a little bit selfish when you line up on the start line? TT? Yeah, because obviously you've got mum, dad, team, everyone, and you're out there on your own, and it, it, everybody knows how dangerous it is. Yeah. So I, do you feel a bit selfish doing it? Do you know what? I've never had that feeling. So I don't, I don't know if that then makes me selfish, because I don't think like that, yeah, yeah. or what, but uh, bike racing in general is quite a selfish sport, I think, not just TT. I think TT is maybe heightened more because of the obvious risks. But even doing this job, you know, we... We're, what are we, near the end of May, we've not had a holiday yet this year, and, I'm not, and, I, and I know not everyone gets holidays all the time and all the rest of it, but we've not even booked a holiday yet for the year, and I've not been on one since August last year, because I'm so busy doing everything. It's a very selfish, self-absorbed sport, one way or another, if you want to succeed at it. If you want to just play it, mm. that's fine. Mm. But if you want to actually win and be good and, and be at the front, you have to, put the work in and put the effort in and that takes time. It's dedication isn't it? Mm. Yeah. My final question is, and again you'll have been asked this hundred times I'm sure, if you had a magic wand and could change any part of the TT course? None of it. Keep that is. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Even the bad bits, the whole point about the TT, for me anyway, is its diversity. You know, it's got so many different elements to it and so many bits that you either like or dislike or you're more comfortable with, less comfortable with. And for me, the whole point is that diversity that makes it so good because where one bike is shite over there, excels over here or vice versa, or it's average there, really good there, bad there or whatever. It doesn't really matter what bike you're on or how you do it. You've always got somewhere where the bike's gonna work well. And that's what you've got to work out as a rider is playing to your advantages or your, to your advantage. And I think that's where the mental side of TT really comes in. Because you're going to have good bits as a rider that you're always, I'm good here, I'm good there. But then each year the bikes always change and they're good at this bit or they're bad at that bit or whatever it may be. And you need to work out and play to your strengths wherever you can. And that that mental game is as much of TT as what it is course knowledge and all the rest of it and, and raw speed. It's had to be a record holder this year, isn't it? Eight races. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> eight, eight straight wins. Uh, eight yeah, I mean, even six would do it. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, of course, that would be unreal and probably is unreal. <laughs> Unrealistic. Um, I mean, even doing the four that we did last week was unbelievable for me. You know, I mean, there's less than people you can count on your hand I think that have actually won four in a week and I'm now one of them so that was already amazing whether we can top that or not who knows but it's a mammoth task you know it's TT's got so many different things that can go right or wrong in your favor not in your favor and and has nothing to do with you you know there's so many the races are so long there's so much going on there's a lot there's a lot that uh, can happen or not happen. For those that have never been to the TT before, have you got, let's say, three words to describe why they should come? Maybe three words to describe it. Uh, the only word, there's only one word that ever describes CT for me, and it doesn't do it justice, is it's unbelievable. That is the only word that even gets close to describing it, and it doesn't get close. So. For anybody that's even thinking about going to the TT, honestly, it's it's something that will blow your mind. There is nothing like it in the world. I second that. Um, for our bike social members, mm. would you do the honour of uh, doing a bit of a giveaway after the TT? Maybe it's a glove, a tire, a <laughs> bit of the fairing, a cap. 
I will figure something out for you. No problem at all. Thank you very much. All the best. Thanks Thank for you. Your time. Cheers, boys. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Just before we do finish, uh, I just want to say we're all thinking of Nathan Harrison at the minute. Uh, unfortunately, before we filmed this, Nathan's mum sadly passed away. So, Nathan, we're all thinking about you, mate. Uh, mm. Hopefully, we see you on the start line come the. Yeah, a week and two days. Yeah, so hopefully we will see you on the start line, mate. Absolutely. And we wish Lee Johnson the best on a recovery, and the fastest recovery possible. And Sweeney too. I think there's been quite a few, wasn't there, from the northwest yeah, that, that got injured. So everyone who's injured from the northwest, get well soon. Thank you for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Any comments, thoughts, questions, um, put them in the thing below. And uh, yeah, thanks again. See you next time. Thank you.